Hey guys, a lot of you were requesting me to make video on a rural and northern immigration pilot program. So here's the detailed video you wanted. I'll tell you about the overview of this program, the benefits and the eligibility criteria as well, along with the step-by-step -step process. So basically everything you want to know about uh, the rural and northern immigration pilot program. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hello everybody, I am Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and I regularly upload Canadian immigration and lifestyle videos. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click the subscribe button and press the bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. Alright, so let's start with the overview of this program. So the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot Program is basically a community driven program. So what does this actually mean? It's been designed to spread the benefits of economic immigration to smaller communities by creating a path to permanent residence for skilled foreign workers who want to work and live in one of the participating communities. Basically what's happening at the moment is that most of the immigrants coming over to Canada settle in urban areas like uh, Toronto, uh, Ottawa, Vancouver, Montreal, etc. But uh, the government also wants them to live and work in smaller communities in rural areas as well. So the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot Program will help increase the long-term retention of skilled newcomers to rural areas. Okay, now when you know the overview and the objective of this program, we can now discuss the eligibility criteria and I'll also tell you the benefits along with the eligibility requirements. Okay, let's talk about the first requirement which is the language requirement. Okay, so the minimum eligibility criteria is CLB4 which is very low. So that's a big benefit but that is only for those people whose job responsibilities lie in the NOCC or NOCD. For NOC B it's CLB5 and for NOC0 and NOC A it's CLB6. So it is still lower than the Express Entry program. Okay, now let's talk about the educational requirements. So you should have a Canadian equivalent of secondary school or the high school. So that is pretty low. Uh, you don't need any degree or diploma to be eligible for this program. Okay, now let's talk about the settlement funds. Those are also pretty low and that is the third benefit of this program. So if you have a family of uh, one member, then you only need around 8,700 Canadian dollars in your account. However, if for express entry, it's something like uh, 12,700, so which is approximately 4,000 more. So if you have two family members in that case, uh, let's say you're, you're moving to Canada with uh, you and your spouse, in that case, you would be actually uh, needing around 11,000 Canadian dollars, which actually is uh, around 16,000 Canadian dollars, which is $5,000 more for in the case of Express Entry. If you, have, if you have three people, in that case, you would need something around 13,300, which is actually 6,000 more in the case of uh, Express Entry. So this is a big benefit in the case of Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot Program. Okay, now we have talked about the first three eligibility criteria. We can talk about the other eligibility criteria as well. The recommendation from a designated community. You must get a recommendation from one of the communities participating in the pilot program. When communities are ready to begin recruiting and recommending candidates, more information will be available. So if you go onto to their website, uh, a lot of information is available and I've taken all the information from this from their official website but there's still more information which needs to be uploaded and that will be very soon anytime in the month of November and as soon as they update it I'll let you guys know. Okay now the work experience so you need a minimum of one year of continuous work experience at least 1560 hours in the past three years so that is the minimum work experience that you actually need. Okay now here comes the tricky part here's the catch you need to have a job offer. So you need to have a full-time, non-seasonal, permanent, genuine job offer to work in one of the participating communities. The wage must meet the minimum wage criteria and your experience must demonstrate that you can perform the duties of the job offer. 
so you need to have a job offer in order to be eligible for this program okay how you can get the job offer who will be the employers which are the communities which will be participating in this program we will talk about all those points later in this video okay now let's talk about the skill level this is something new your job offer must be at the same skill level or one level above or one level below the NOC that applies to your work experience so this is something new that uh, even if you have a job offer of uh, one level below your job experience so let's say your work experience is actually for NOC level A but you get a job offer for NOC level B in that case that is still fine so that is something good right however for NOC skill level D the job you are being offered must be in the same occupation all right now let's talk about the participating communities of course you must be wondering which will be those communities where you might have to migrate in the near future okay so now let's talk about those communities as a candidate you need to find the job with an employer in one of the participating communities if a community endorses you and you're successful in applying for permanent residence you'll then move there to work and live all right i just hope that it's pretty clear okay now let's talk about the communities that will be participating in this pilot program so in ontario there will be five communities overall north bay sudbury timmins salt Ste. mary and thunder bay in manitoba there will be two communities brandon and eltona in saskatchewan it would be moose jaw and in alberta it would be charles Shom. in british columbia it would be vernon and uh, west kootenay okay so only these communities will be eligible for this pilot program and ircc will be working with these communities to help them recruit the candidates okay now you might be concerned that how you can actually apply to a community the details on how to apply to a community will be available later in 2019 so this is a quote which has been mentioned on their official website and they say that uh, it would be available anytime in November. So as I told you before, as soon as those details are available, I'll update you guys very soon after that. Okay, so what you can expect from a community. The communities will promote the pilot and their community to prospective candidates. They'll identify job opportunities in the local economy and work to match applicants to jobs. They will assess Prospective candidates who best with the economic needs of the community have a genuine employment opportunity and have the intention of staying in the community. So that is very important. That is the prime objective of this pilot program. They will also recommend candidates for permanent residence to IRCC for a final decision. They will provide a welcoming community for immigrants. They will connect immigrants to established members of the community and settlement services as well and lastly they will report on the results of the pilot program so these are all the responsibilities of the communities that will be participating in uh, this program the list that i told you before okay so now let's talk about the step-by-step -step process to permanent residence through the rural and northern immigration pilot program and for that i'll have to take you to their official website canada.ca Okay guys, so this is a flowchart which is available on their website. It is for uh, the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot Program. It is basically a step-by-step -step guide to permanent residence. Okay, so the very first step would be the selection of the communities to participate in the pilot program, which has already taken place. So we have the finalized list of the communities, which I just told you. After that, either the community or the employer will approach the prospective candidates or the prospective candidates will approach the community or the employer so that will be the second step the candidate submits the application for recommendation after that the uh, community reviews the applications and selects the best fit candidates all of those candidates which uh, get selected community will actually recommend those candidates making them eligible to apply for IRCC for permanent residence. The candidates submits permanent residence application to IRCC. After that, the candidate is assessed against the federal selection criteria and admissibility requirements. 
After that, the candidate uh, will obtain the permanent residence and then the community will welcome the candidate and family members and provide the services to support their settlement and integration. So basically, this is the step-by-step -step guide to permanent residence. But yes, the details for this part are not yet very clear. As soon as they are clear, I'll let you guys know about it. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button and share it with your friends if you think it would be useful for them. And also, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.